So this presentation is about policies and requirements, just the other things that you need to know about the teacher ed program and specifically about the pre-teaching semester. We talked about the pre-teaching semester being the application semester. And so you'll be doing several things um, during pre-teaching that will be checked and then um, used to um, formally admit you into the program. One, you'll be taking courses. Um, you're all enrolled in courses right now, and you need to make sure that you have a C- minus or better in those courses. If you make anything below a C-, minus, um, you do have to retake the course. Um, you need a GPA of 2.5 or above in order to be formally admitted into the program, so your advisor will check your GPA at the end of pre-teaching to make sure that you do meet that requirement. Um, you have to show that you completed your field experience hours this semester, so the time log that we talked about in the previous presentation. You'll take a PPR benchmark. The PPR is one of the tests that you have to take to be certified. Um, you'll take a practice. The benchmark is a practice test. You'll do that actually pretty early. You'll be receiving some information about that soon. Uh, all students take a writing assessment. Uh, you complete an interview, and we track your professional attributes. So we'll go into more depth about each of these um, things in just a minute. So we've talked about coursework already, we've talked about GPA, and in the previous presentation we talked about your field work. So we're going to move on to um, the, te the other requirements for the semester. Testing. So the state requires a minimum of two exams um, for certification. So most of you will take two state exams. Um, one that everyone will take is uh, the Pedagogy and Professional Responsibilities, what we call the PPR test. That is an EC12 PPR or an EC12 test. That means anybody in any certain area takes the same test. So don't worry when you see EC12 PPR and you say, oh, but I'm EC6. That's okay. It's the same test for everyone. And then you have your content exams. So if you're EC6, you take the EC6 generalist test. If you're 48 math, you take a 48 math content test. If you're 812 history, yours is the 812 history. So everyone has at least two tests. Um, some certifications, the special ed certification, the bilingual generalist, um, require a third exam. Um, but most uh, most cert students have two exams. And for each of these exams, you have benchmarks that are given at the UH Testing Center. And you can think of the benchmarks as like practice tests. Um, this semester, you're actually gonna take the PPR benchmark um, to just gauge, get an idea of what that test is like. Your faculty members will use the results of that test to plan instruction and, and see what um, this group of students needs. And so we can help you make sure you're successful on that test throughout the, your program. Um, those benchmarks are going to be scheduled for the week of February 9th and the week of February 16th during your field experience time. So instead of going to a school, you would go to the UH Testing Center and take your benchmark. The teacher ed office is going to be splitting students into groups, letting you know when you need to go. But right now, just know that um, you need to block off your field day on the week of the 9th and the week of the 16th for different things that you'll need to be doing. Your, your benchmark for your content exam will occur later in the program, but this semester you will take the, the PPR benchmark. Um, you'll be approved to take state exams before you graduate, and we'll go over all that in subsequent semesters. But right now, what you need to, to concern yourself with is that you will be taking the PPR benchmark uh, the week uh, February 9th or the week of February 16th. And PPR, you can think of, it's kind of the how to teach test. General teaching strategies, ethics, laws, those kinds of things. We No one expects you to pass this test right now. You haven't had any courses. This is just a good diagnostic, a good way for us to see where you are right now so we can help uh, design your instruction through the program. A second requirement this semester is the writing assessment. All students in pre-teaching that are enrolled in an introductory course do participate in the writing assessment. The schedule, this is a tentative schedule, but again, um, this writing assessment will occur either the week of the 9th or the week of the 
16th during your fuel experience time. So one of those weeks you'll be taking the PPR benchmark, one of those weeks you'll be taking the writing assessment. Um, what happens is everybody in an intro class is uploaded to Blackboard. You'll see, soon you'll see uh, Quest 1000 pop up on your Blackboard. That's the writing assessment. You can click on that and you can actually see um, everything you need to know about the writing assessment. There are four possible prompts. Um, you're gonna, when you come to the writing assessment, you're gonna have one hour to write on one of the prompts. Now you won't know which prompt you're gonna get, but you'll know it's exactly like one of the four that are uploaded. So you can prepare for the four prompts and know that when you come in, you will write on one of those. Um, the UH Writing Center scores your writing assessment and depending on your score, you either pass the writing assessment or um, you have writing consultations that you need to complete at the writing center. So if there's an area of growth um, that the writing center uh, feels that you have, you'll work with them on that area. And once you complete that, then you can be formally admitted into the program. So again, everyone takes the writing assessment this semester. It's going to happen either the week of February 9th or the week of February 16th. You can go into Blackboard to see the prompts. Um, and when you come to campus, you'll have one hour to write on one prompt. Most likely you'll come to campus and you'll do your field experience orientation and then you'll complete your writing assessment on the same day. Toward the end of the semester, everyone in pre-teaching completes an interview. Um, these interviews are scheduled by the teacher ed office. You'll receive an email asking you to sign up for a time slot and then you'll come to during that time and you'll have a 15 minute meeting with a faculty member and the faculty member will ask you general questions why you want to be a teacher what do you think your strengths are for the program and this is an opportunity for you to meet one-on-one -on -one with the faculty member ask questions review your progress and just kind of get an idea of how you're doing this semester it's it's nice for you to be able to communicate that to a faculty member and for faculty to be able to meet you. Um, it's required for formal admission to the program and every student um, in the pre-teaching semester must complete one in order to move forward. But again, this happens at the end of the semester, so this will not be occurring um, until a around mid-April. Well, early April, maybe mid-April. Also through the program, you will be assessed on your professional attributes in class, out in the field, um, your faculty members, cooperating teachers, um, university supervisors will be assessing you each semester on these professional attributes. The headings are listed here, but you can find descriptions of each of these on the College of Education website. Going along with the professional attributes, we have a, a few final thoughts. Um, Becoming a teacher is a lot of different things. It's completing coursework, it's completing time in the field, but it's also being on time and being flexible and um, working as a team. So you can get straight A's in your coursework but still not be recommended for certification if you're, you don't have exemplary professional attributes. So if you're late all the time or, or you are always in conflict, then we, we have to, to think about that and think, you know, how are you gonna be as a teacher? So you may not be recommended. You could also get great teaching evaluations. So you're out there teaching and you're a really good um, teacher and effective, but if you're not passing your courses, we can't recommend you for certification. And lastly, you can be professional and sweet and lovely and do all, you know, get A's in your coursework and be a great teacher, but if you don't pass your benchmark requirements or your state test, we can't recommend you either. So making sure that teaching is the, the whole person and we're looking at lots of different things in order to be recommended. Also, it's important to talk about um, who you are online. Making sure at this point you're moving into the professional phase of your life and of your program. So check that email address you have. Make sure it's professional, like something like your first dot last name or something boring like that. We get um, some crazy email addresses, butterfly kisses at uh.edu, hot cougar mama. Those are times to get rid of those email addresses and, and get you something that's professional. Um, also, make sure that you forwarded your UH email to a personal account through PeopleSoft because most of your correspondence 
come through your UH email account. So if it's not routed correctly or it's routed to an email that you don't check, you're going to miss important um, messages. Um, also, if you do have that hot cougar babe email address and you forward your UH email to that one, when you, when you reply, we see hot cougar babe. So make sure that you, you really do change that to something like your name and um, use that at least for UH only. You can keep your hot cougar babe for your parents and your friends and, and those people, but here and to principals, to your advisor, to your instructors, make sure you have a professional email address. Also, it's time to cleanse your online identity. You need to Google yourself, make sure that you know what comes up when you put your name into Google because the first thing your cooperating teacher is going to do um, is, is, is Google you and see what comes up. If, if you have a common name, make sure you have um, an explanation for what comes up if it's not you. Um, make sure you're checking your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, um, that it's all, um, you know, cleansed. We have had principles. Um, tell us that they did not hire someone because of their Facebook account and their Facebook account was two years old but because it was still there um, the principal could see it and and she did not hire um, a candidate because of it um, be careful who you friends make sure you know what you know what does legal mean I mean I know you may be old enough to go out and have a glass of wine but if you're posting it on your Facebook um, teachers are just held to a different standard so just making sure that everything out there is is good and um, pure. Um, also make sure you're always communicating professionally to everyone, to your cooperating teachers, to your peers, to your advisor, um, everyone, because we're, we're making sure that you're moving from um, being a, a student that rolls out of bed in their pajamas and makes it late to class to a professional. So we're, we're wanting to help you in that way. So again, if you have any questions, make sure the resources we provide, you use them, um, the website, um, these PowerPoints, um, but also email the TeachEd website at any time um, with any questions regarding the program.